Okay, so let's take a look at the application preferences here in Cinema 4D. So we can go to Edit Preferences, or we can do a Command or Control E to open up our Preference dialog. So there's a ton of information in here, and we don't need to go over all of this, but let's take a look at some of the important ones. Obviously the language, that's pretty important if you're going to need to change that, but we only have English installed. We have the color scheme, dark and light. You can change that to light, and you can see how that looks. Now, that's a little bright, especially if I'm going to be working for long periods of time, so I usually keep that at dark. Now you have Show Bubble Help. This is on by default. If you don't want that on, you can turn that off. That's basically whenever you hover over an item, it tells you what that is. And when you're getting started, I think that's pretty important, so I would leave that checked if I were you. Now if you're going to be using a graphics tablet, you're going to want to come over here to your input device and tell it that you are in fact using a graphics tablet. If you don't, you're going to get some really weird movement in your scene viewport here. So be sure and turn that on. We can jump on over here to navigation. Something you may want to take a look here is reverse orbit. If you're coming from a package like 3ds Max, you're probably going to want to turn that on just to make yourself feel a little bit more comfortable. If you're not really happy with the speed of your pan, dolly, zoom, and orbit, you can change those right here. Either slow them down or speed them up. Another important one is your OpenGL. So if you have an OpenGL compliant video card, all of that information is going to be here. You can show the capabilities of your particular card right here. So this is important. And just remember, when you make changes here in the preferences, this is a global change. So even when you turn the program off and restart it, these changes are still going to be the same. If we come over here to Files, we can turn on the Auto Save. And if you don't save on a regular basis, you probably want to turn this on. I do save on a regular basis. I'm sort of always concerned about losing my work, so I do save. But if you're not, this is a good one to turn on. Because you don't want to go an hour or so into your project and then your computer shut down and you lose all your work. That's terrible. If you're working with a group of people and you need a single place to save all of your textures, you can give a path right here to where your textures will be saved. We can come over here to units and we can change our units here. We can display feet. Centimeters is the default most of the time. And actually, I had changed that a few days ago for a specific project and forgot to change that back to centimeters. So that just shows you right there, I was working in feet now. So I guess the lesson there is, if you're going to make a change here, be sure and realize it's global and it's for good until you come back and you change it again. You can also choose your color picker here. You can choose RGB, HSV, simple, enhanced color table, whatever you want, and you can just try these and then go and take a look and see how that's working on your particular system. It's a little different for PC versus Mac, but this is where you can make those changes. Now a lot of this other stuff has to do with add-on modules that you can purchase for Cinema 4D, so we're not really going to go into that at this time. Something else you may want to take a look at are the import-export options here, and you can just see how many different programs and file formats that Cinema 4D works with. It's pretty impressive. Okay, so this is the application preferences for Cinema 4D. Very important stuff, but once you get it set up, typically you're not going to be coming back in here and making a whole lot of changes.